Last week, I showed you guys how to select photos from the user's photo library. This week, I'm gonna show you how to upload those photos to Firebase Storage and also how to retrieve them for display. Now, before we dive in, just a quick reminder that we do have a Code with Chris Ideas board where you can vote on topics you'd like to see or submit ideas of your own. With that being said, let's dive into today's topic. All right, so this project here was the project from last week's CWC screencast number 11, which was to allow the user to select an image from the photo library. And just in case you forgot how this looked like, let me just quickly build this and show you. So I'm going to go ahead and select a photo. It's going to bring up the photo selector or photo picker from the user's photo library and I select one and it goes like this. Now what we're going to do now is add an upload button which is going to upload the selected image to Firebase storage um, and then we can also take a look at retrieving it. The first thing we have to do though is actually to connect this Xcode project to a Firebase instance. So let's jump over to Firebase, console.firebase.google.com is where this is. Um, if you haven't signed up for Firebase before, you can just log in with your Google account and you can create some free projects. So let's create a brand new project here. Let's call it um, Firebase Demo. I'm going to disable Google Analytics. And then we wait. So we're going to click on iOS to set this up. Here we're going to grab our bundle identifier. So that's this right here. And we paste it in there. Now I'm going a bit fast because we've done this many times um, using Firebase. Uh, you can check out our databases course uh, module two, I believe, for Firebase. Uh, if you want to get some detailed instructions on what it is and how we use it. Okay, so I'm going to download this Google service info P list. And this is basically where it contains all of the configuration info to point to this Firebase instance. So I'm going to save it in my project folder. And then we are going to go ahead and drag it into this project. Uh, do that here, drag this in here, we'll just put it right there, copy items if needed. Uh, make sure this is in that target. We'll put it right there. And then we are going to use uh, Swift Package Manager to install the Firebase SDK. So you can follow these instructions, uh, or if you've done it before, it should already be uh, saved, and I'll show you that. So copy this URL right here. We're going to do it via Xcode. But we're going to go to File, Add Packages. If you've done this before, you should already have this recently used. If not, you know you can go ahead and paste that URL in there. But, oh, it disappeared. Recently used there. Okay. So I'm just going to choose the one from the recently used menu. And then we're going to wait. And we are going to add both the Firestore database package as well as the um, Firebase storage libraries. Because one of it, the storage is for uploading the files. The database part is creating a reference to that file because it's not enough to just, you know, upload it somewhere. You have to keep track of it in your database so that when you want to retrieve it, you, um, you have a reference to where it's located in your storage. All right. So it looks like this is still taking a little while. Okay. So here we are. Let's take a look at, uh, I want fire store and I also want storage. So we're going to add these two. Now I'm, I'm going to first start with showing you how to upload the selected file to Firebase storage. And this is the documentation. You'll find a link to this down below in the, uh, oh, we haven't gone through the wizard yet. Okay. So we've installed the packages. So let's go ahead and click next. And we're going to need to import Firebase. And then we're going to need to run this line of code firebase app dot configure so i'll copy this one right here we're going to go back we're going to go into the app entry point right here and we're just going to create an init method in here and that's where we're going to run that line of code we're also going to have to import firebase right up there so hit command b to build this project make sure that it builds with all of the new packages that it just added 
we can go ahead and click next and continue to console. Now here, we're going to have to set up both our Firestore database and our storage. Let's set up storage first, since uh, I'm gonna show you how to upload files first. So get started. Now by default, it has a rule that says you won't be able to write data and read data unless you are authenticated. Because typically, if you are going to allow people to you know, store files on your storage, you're probably gonna pair this with some sort of authentication. So uh, we typically use Firebase authentication here, and we've shown how to do that in our databases course as well. So you can go ahead and learn how to do that there. For this demo, I am going to change this rule to just allow public reading and writing, but that's definitely not what you wanna do um, when you actually create an app. So we are going to do that. And the reason uh, for making it public is just so I can show you the code uh, for what it would take to, to upload a file and download a file. If you wanna see uh, an example of authentication with Firebase Storage, uh, with Firestore Database, then our uh, chat app, Swift UI chat app would be a good thing to take a look at because it, it has all of those elements working in tandem and that course is coming out. If it hasn't already at the, th at the time of this recording, it's coming out in this month. So if you're watching this in the future, then it should be available. All right, so Firebase Storage, you're gonna go into your rules and you're just gonna change this to if true. And it's saying like, see, allow reads and writes if the authentication is not null which means that the user is logged in. So I'm gonna erase this and just say if is true, if true. So that means this is always gonna be true. So anybody can read and write. So I'm gonna publish this. It ah, didn't give me any warnings. Usually it'll give you some warnings. Um, and then in here, you can organize. This is basically your storage bucket and you can add new folders here. So for example, since we're storing images, I might create an images folder. Uh, and then when you when you'll see in the code when we upload files, you can specify which paths, which folders you want to upload uh, th that data. Okay, so now that we have initialized our storage, let's go back here, and we, we are going to go into the content view. Okay, so now we can start implementing the code to actually upload the file. So what I'm going to do is add an extra button down here in this V stack. It's gonna be the upload button. And this button will only show up if the image has been selected. So if selected image is not nil, then we are going to show a button. This is going to be upload the image. And this is going to just be a text that says upload photo. Uh, what I'm going to do is not implement the code right here. I'm going to create a separate function uh, within this content view struct, and we're just going to call that call that method. So we'll call that upload photo, and we are going to declare that right here. And then we are going to. First of all, let's take a look at the documentation to see what the steps are. Okay, so if we take a look at this documentation, first you have to create a reference and you can do that by importing, uh, it doesn't show the import statement here, but you have to import the storage, Firebase storage framework, and then you can get a reference to uh, this storage service. Um, but it, ultimately it's storage.storage.reference. And then following that, this is where you can specify any folders that you want. So this is in this example, you know, you, you can specify the images folders where you want to upload it. Uh, if you want to specify a specific file name, which you should, um, you do slash and then whatever the name is dot um, the file extension. We actually go into the section for uploading files. This will be a little more complete. So right here, these are two different ways that you can upload your files. So you can either upload it directly to the root of your storage. So all your files are just gonna sit here in the root, or you can 
put it into a directory like this. While these two, the file names, like if you use the name property and you ask what the, the file name is, they're both mountains, right? But the full path, these two are not equal, right? Because this is going to be uploaded to the root. This is going to be uploaded to images slash mountains. And then to actually upload the file, there are, uh, there's a distinction between uploading the data from memory, which is actually our situation where we have this selected UI image. So we're going to turn that into data and then upload it as a file. Or if you want to upload an actual file, you know, on your device or, uh, you know, stored in the storage of your app or something like that. So we're going to actually be taking a look at this upload from data in memory. So here they're showing a piece of data for us. We're going to be turning the UI image into data. And then uh, the, this is the reference to the storage that I showed you earlier, storage.storage.reference. And then here it's specifying the folder and the file name. We're probably going to generate a unique um, ID just to keep all the file names unique. Uh, and then you use that uh, reference here and you use put data to basically upload that data. Now you are going to be able to specify two parameters with the upload data. So the actual data you're going to upload and any metadata associated with that file. So uh, in this example, they use nil, but if you scroll a little further down, there is a section that shows you where you can add any metadata you want to associate with the file. So for example, the store, uh, the content type is, is what they use here. Uh, it is optional though. So you see that they're specifying nil here. And then there's also a closure for when the upload has completed and the response has come back. And there's two parameters. One is error. That's pretty self-explanatory. So was there an error during the upload? But this parameter metadata, now if it was a successful upload, then this metadata will contain something. It's, it's not going to be nil. However, if there was a problem like storing the file, then this would actually be nil and you'd probably find the error in this parameter. So you can see here in this code that they're checking that the metadata is not nil. Otherwise, an error has occurred. And then here you can see that uh, they can access different uh, uh, attributes of the metadata that gets returned. So you can check the size and the content type and things like that. And then here, in order to get a download URL after it's been uploaded, you can access the download URL property. So let's go put this into practice and try this out. Uh, we are going to implement our upload photo method in here. So just to walk through the steps, let's write it out first. Create storage reference, uh, turn our image into data. And we are going to uh, upload that data. And then ultimately, we also want to save a reference to that file in Firestore database, right? Okay, so first of all, let's import Firebase storage up here. Okay, next let's go down here and let's create let storage ref equals storage. Oops, storage dot storage dot reference. And then um, we are also going to want to, uh, I missed a step here, specify the file path and name. But even before we do that, we should probably check if we can turn our image into data first because there may be an issue with that so let image data equals our uh, selected image and we're going to force unwrap that uh, dot uh, jpeg data so you can either turn it into a png data or jpeg data but check this out this could return nil right if it it's not successful in returning jpeg data then this will be nil. And in, in that case, we can't upload anything. So I'm going to get the JPEG data and I'm just going to set the compression quality to 0 0.8. Now, in order to run this function, we should, you know, we've tested that selected image as not nil uh, before they can even see this button and tap on it that accesses this method here. But 
just to be safe, we could still uh, make sure that the selected image property isn't nil. So guard selected image not nil else return because there's nothing to upload in that case, right? Same thing goes for this. If we're not able to turn this image into the data, then there's no point. So again, just to reduce the number of um, nested if statements, I'm going to use a guard statement here. If guard image data not nil else return. Uh, and then here we're going to specify the file path and, and the name. So let uh, file reference equals um, storage reference dot child and the path is going to be images so this folder currently doesn't exist here but it's going to automatically create it if it doesn't exist if we if we specify that folder here and then for the file name i am going to substitute um, a random uuid dot jpeg so this uuid we can create like this we've got a uuid string and you'll see what that looks like in a second and then here we do let upload task equals file ref dot put data so there are a couple different ones here right uh, we probably want one with completion so this one so there's the data that we upload there's any metadata that we want to store remember in the sample code they put nil and then the completion for when it's finished uploading and then we can check if it was actually successful and ultimately we do want the completion because we want to store a reference in firebase a firestore database if it was successful okay so let's put the data in there image data and i'm going to force unwrap it because we've guarded that it's not nil Okay, and for metadata, I'm going to put nil. And for completion, I'm going to double click this to open it up. And these are both optional. Remember that if there's an error, that means there will be something in here. If it was successful, that means there will be something in here. So this let's give these two parameters some names, metadata and um, error. So what we want to check for so we want we want error to be nil, right? And metadata to not be nil. And that that signifies to us that it's a successful download. And then in that case, we will save a reference to Firestore database. Now I'm gonna put this as a to-do for now because this is enough for us to start uploading an image and seeing what that looks like. So let's go ahead and try it out. I'm gonna run this, and then we're just gonna make sure that we can run this code and we can see some files in here. So let's go ahead and do that. Our simulator is launching. Okay, there we go. So select a photo. Let's go ahead and select this one. I'm going to choose upload photo. And I should have added some breakpoints. Is there an error? Let's see. Let's go here. Let's refresh. Ah, there we go. This, this folder images and then inside we have the uuid.jpg, all right, and it's two megabytes. We take a look at this. All right, that's great. So that is basically how you upload um, images to Firebase storage. Let's go over to our Firebase console again, and this time we are going to uh, set up our Firestore database. Create database, start in test mode. It's going to let anybody uh, write to it. It's going to expire on that date automatically okay so i am going to just start a new collection i'll just call it images and then here i'm just going to set up um, a sample document with a field and ultimately i want this value to be the path of my image in storage okay so whatever that path may be uh probably images dot whatever uuid dot jpeg that that's ultimately what i want so um you know, in the um, in an actual app, you'll probably associate an upload 
with a particular user. In this case, uh, I am just going to store all of the images in a collection and fetch all of them. So you get, you know, you get a sense of how you upload files, how you save a reference in the database pointing to the file, and then how you then retrieve that and grab the associated file for display. Okay, so here we are going to implement this to do. We're first going to have to import, since we're using the, the database now, import Firestore. And then down here, we're just going to do a simple save statement. Uh, let db equals Firestore dot Firestore db dot collection equal images. And then we are going to call document. And this is going to generate a new, uh, uh, let's just start this images collection. Do I have to put in, I don't want to add a first document. All right, whatever. I'm going to start this collection and I will delete this document because Okay, so using this document method will basically generate a new document with a random document ID. And then following this, I'm going to call the set data method where we can pass in um, a dictionary and the value, sorry, the label is going to be URL and the value for this is going to be this file path, right? Because this points to that, that image. So I'm going to create another um, constant, just put that here. And that way I can reference this path in here. Okay, so let's upload another image and take a look if this is doing what we want. Select a photo, let's choose, uh, let's choose this one this time, let's upload the photo. Actually, open another tab. Oh, do you see that document? So it's pointing to images and then, you know, this random string. Open the storage in another tab. And you can see that, that this is the image that we just uploaded. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one because we didn't keep track of that on the database side. All right, so now you can see what we're doing, right? We're uploading a file into storage and then we are writing a database entry to point to that file. So the next step would be to retrieve this uh, data from the database and then uh, retrieve the file for display. So let's go over back to Xcode here and we are going to close this upload method and we're going to create a different one called retrieve photos. And this is going to be, uh, let's see, get the data from the database and then get the image data for each uh, in storage for each image reference. And then uh, display the images. Okay, so what we're going to do, like where we're going to display it is actually right below the upload button in this VStack here. So we are going to create a divider and then uh, let's just use an H stack. And then we are going to basically loop through a collection of retrieved images and display it. So I am going to create up here at state bar. Let's just call the, these retrieved images UI image. Uh, well, no, this would be a UI image like that a collection, an array of UI images. And we are going to, you know, when we call this method retrieve photos, we are going to, oops, I missed that. We are going to retrieve the images uh, from storage, and then we are going to put it into this array, and then this UI code will automatically update. So say for each, uh, for each photo inside retrieved images, ID, uh, self image in and then we're gonna use an image element gotta use you pass it in as a ui image and then let's make these resizable 
and set it to 200 by 200. We can get rid of the alignment. We can take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so this is how it's going to get displayed in the, the UI. And then down here, let's go ahead and retrieve it. So let db equals Firestore, uh, Firestore, db dot collection images dot get documents. All right, and sorry that I'm going a little bit fast here because um, the point of this isn't to show you how to work with Firebase. So if if this is all new to you, I recommend um, going through the Fire, so, sorry, database course. Uh, module 2, the Firebase stuff. Uh, so the two parameters we get back are snapshot, which contains the results of getting all the documents in this images collection, right? It's going to grab all of this stuff. And error tells us any potential errors. So what we want to do is if error is nil and snapshot is not nil, then we have something to work with. So um, the actual documents that are inside, sorry, the actual documents that are retrieved are in snapshot dot documents. So it contains all of all of the individual documents that have been retrieved. So we're going to say for document in snapshot and we can force unwrap that because we checked that it's not nil. So for document in documents, what we're going to do is uh, extract the file path, we're going to actually create an array here to keep track of all the file paths. So var, uh, this is actually is just a string array. So in the doc, we are going to fetch, see in each document, we're going to fetch that key, right, URL, and that's going to return that value for us. We know it's a string, right? So we're going to append it to paths.append. Okay, next, loop through all the returned docs. And then here, we are going to loop through each file path and fetch the data from storage. Uh, that's actually this, all right? So let's take a look at how we do this. Let's write the for loop first. So for path in paths, we are going to fetch it. If we take a look at the documentation, we can go to the next section, download files. And again, we create a reference, which we uh, we have. And then, so here's, uh, the storage reference dot child and then the path and then you you instead of put data you write get data you specify the maximum allowed file size that you want to retrieve so this is actually one megabyte because this is expressed in bytes yeah that's right uh, and then you get back the data and a parameter to specify if any errors occurred so if the error is uh, empty then then you're good if it contains something, then an error has occurred. So then you just grab your data and you create a new UI image using the data initializer and you pass it the data that it retrieved from storage. And that's that's how we're going to display the image that was retrieved. So let's try this out. Uh, we are going to say uh, get a reference to storage. Um, specify the path, retrieve the data. Okay, so let uh, storage reference equals storage dot storage dot reference. Let file reference equals storage reference dot uh, child. And the path is, you know, is what we retrieved from Firestore. It's like it's that. Okay, so we, we put all of that into this paths array, right? And now we're looping through each of those paths 
and we're specifying that we want to to grab that and specify the path and then in here we're going to retrieve the data so it's going to be file ref dot get data right with max size so uh, i'm going to say i'm just going to say five megabytes completion you see the two parameters data and error let's double click this to open up the closure data error and then we're going to say uh, check for errors if error is nil that means there's no errors and we can then uh, create a ui image and put it into our array for display so uh, let image equals ui image data well actually let's let's also check that the data is not nil if there's no errors and data is not nil right then here we can just pass in and unwrap that and then we are going to add this image to retrieved images uh, to display so we are going to say um, retrieved images dot append and we're going to pass in that image but when you do this it's going to trigger the view code to um, to recalculate and then it's going to uh, display the images but since this is causing the ui to update we need to uh, pass it over to the main thread to do because you, you don't want to do this from a background thread which is where this this code is happening right now so we're going to do that Let's see uh, oh there's a possibility that that this initializer uh, returns nil all right so in that case if that is the case we wouldn't want to do it let's let's use optional binding here if let image equals that and if we we were able to create an image that's when we would add it in here all right so i mean there this is quite a bit of nesting so it's kind of hard to read uh, you can to ease some of this i mean this is why async and await was created file path is this one here and you Okay, so what we're gonna do now uh, is test this out. But first of all, we gotta figure out where we're gonna call retrieve photos. Um, there are two spots which I can think of. One is when this view appears because we wanna take a look at the photos. So when this V stack shows up, we are gonna say on appear perform retrieve images. The other place we'll wanna call this is after um after we have just uploaded an image right and saved the reference so uh, i am actually going to use a different set data method i'm going to use one with a completion this one right here so this one allows me to pass the same data to upload or to save but it also has a completion block and i'm going to open up this closure and just do an error here so if there were no errors display a new image uh, so this is going to be let's see if error is nil then call retrieve images uh, keep in mind though that you know i just thought of a better way to do this um, you know, if, if you wanted to do this, you should throw it over to the main thread to do because it does update the UI. But I just thought of a better way. Like, there's no reason why we need to retrieve the images over again. That doesn't really seem to make sense to me right here. Uh, let's see. Oh, sorry, not retrieve images, uh, retrieve images. Um, the reason why is 
after we've uploaded this single image, right, why not just add that selected image? Because we already have it as a UI image, right? Selected image is the UI image. This is the photo we just uploaded to storage successfully because we know it's successful at this point. Why not just append that to our retrieved images? And that saves uh, some bandwidth. That saves us having to, you know, run this code all over again. So let's just say uh, if error is nil, that means there are no errors, add the uploaded image to the list of images for display. So self.retrievedimages.append uh, self.selected image. And we can force and wrap that because we just we just did that. And again, this is going to be affecting the uh, the UI. So we want to do this in the in the main thread because the main thread is responsible for updating the UI. All right, so let's try this out. Uh, if I run this now, supposing there are no errors, oops, something's wrong. I cannot call ah that what did I call it? Retrieve photos. Oops. Retrieve photos. There we go. In storage right now, well, in our database, we have a reference to a single image. And in storage, we have a single image. So hopefully when we launch it, we'll, we'll see that. Okay, we do. Perfect. That is, that's really big though. Let's make that a little smaller. Let's make that 100 and 100 and run that again. So this time we can actually see it. And then we'll upload a couple more. And we should see it up here. All right, so there's the photo that we have in our database. Let's choose that. Upload it. Ah, cool. Just to double check. There's the second file. And there's also another entry here. Let's select another photo. Let's upload that. All right, I hope that was helpful. If you have any specific questions about this tutorial, do post it in our Code Crew forum and myself or someone from the team will jump in to help out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.